guys, welcome back to my vlog. Today you're joining me on the River Boyne in the Boyne Valley in County Mead. We're probably about, I'd say about 10 miles from Newgrange here along the same stretch of river and the fabulous story of the boy, the legend that became the great warrior by the name of Finn McCool uh, and the salmon of knowledge. And the story begins by the with the boy of Finn and he was the son of Cool, who, Cool, who was one of the greatest warriors and the leader of Nafina, which would have been the protectors and the hunters for the king of Mead at the time. And the story and the legend changes, because even I mentioned it to my boys today, and they only learned kind of the, the they didn't kind of go back. The story of the, the salmon and where it came from is obviously a legend. Some people believe that it came from the great flood of Noah. And this was a, a creature that transformed from a bird or sorry a fish to a bird into an eagle back into a even a horse i think at times and a mythical creature which ended up becoming the myth of the salmon of knowledge and the boy named fion the son of cool so basically the story begins that um before before fion was con before fion was born his father cool was killed in a great battle with a by an arch enemy of his by the name of gull mcmurrah another a guy who probably would have been part of another kingdom here in Ireland. It would have been split into a few kingdoms, Ireland at the time, probably, I'm not too sure on the dates and that. These are all myths and legends and they would change over the years, you know. But a lot of it is based along this river here, the River Boyne, you know. And so basically the story goes about young Fionn, while, while his father, at just a time after his father was killed in the battle, his mother, Myrna, would have went to the king and said, listen, you know, we're under serious threat from this Gull McMurra and I'm worried about my unborn child, which I'm carrying, you know. So the king vowed to help Myrna. And so when the child was born, Myrna had to go and see two local, we'll say one was a local warrior, two women, a local warrior here, probably somewhere on the banks of the River Boyne, a warrior and another druid, a druid by the name of... Uh, I think I'm not checking my note. Fiacal and and Bodil. So the two ladies would have taken in this baby and Myrna would have been under the, the total uh, agreement that she was never to contact the child again or never to have any dealings with young Fionn as he would have grown up. And at the time, I think, as the myths and the legend changed, you know, that they gave, they gave him the name of Dermid or Dimpna. Sorry, Dimpna they named the boy, you know, so... The druid and the uh, the druid and the uh, the warrior would have taught uh, Dimpne Fionn everything about hunting and survival and obviously how to defend yourself in in those times in the twelfth century or when I'm not too sure on the years because obviously they all changed. But um, we follow on as the story goes. Young Fionn was told really not to get in contact with anyone out in the outside world and stuff. And as he, I'll move on. So he, I will give you a look around the area and that and give it a little bit of a uh, go this way out this way and yeah around this way um so yeah if you're young Fionn would have been told basically you know he's to keep to himself and just do a bit of hunting and a bit of fishing and always come back and that and of course as young, as young Fionn got older and that he just tried to get out into the world and he would have heard he would have heard other children playing outside the forests and out off the river and local settlements and chieftains and stuff so I think one day, as the legend has it, he, he could hear children playing and a, a game or some sort was going out and across in one of the fields and he uh, went out and he had a look, so he did, to see what was going on. And uh, that's, that's when he came across the settlement over with the chieftains and that sort of thing and he seen them playing their games. And obviously he, he went in and within a, within a couple of days and that he was probably one of the best players on the team and they couldn't understand how where this little boy had come from and a lot of the other lads on the team started to get jealous of him because he was so good and it came to the stage where he was able to beat everyone he'd arrive on his own with a hurling stick and he'd take on the whole team and one day I think he arrived and I think they all turned on him and of course Fionn being the young boy and the warrior he was he took them all on and he left some of the boys half dead and ran off back into the forests and I'm going to get ready to show you now exactly the next part to do if you can yeah, stop it there yeah. <laughs> now poor young Fionn when he went back to the two, the two his two minders and his two guardians uh, 
vehicle and obviously Bodle, the two ladies that were looking after him and he told them what was after happening and they were worried for his safety obviously because what they were really worried about was like the parents of the children that were badly hurt in the fight after the hurling match because he was that good and because they were at, well it didn't match didn't even take place they were that jealous of him that he was that good so they had a meeting and they basically said to him you know like you're going to have to get out of here because people are going to cop on to who you are and you're the son of cool remember they'll want to know what's going on and what, what's they'll put and obviously your father's your father's arch enemy gull mcmurray when gull mcmurray gets you you're gone right so he they sent them down to the kingdom of bantry down in cork and when he went down to see the king in bantry he was out and he went in and he he had uh, he done a couple of bits with the boys down there and obviously joined the king's army down there and obviously the, the, he progressed very quick and all of a sudden the king of Bantry wanted to know who are you he says to him and he says I am I am Dimpna he says and he says you're not Dimpna he says I know who you are I know that face he says you're the son of Cool he says and he says the other thing. I not want you around here, he says, because you're not safe. Because when Gull McMurray finds out that you're down in Cork, we're all going to get it. If you want to stop, you can. Thank when Gull, um, so obviously, guys, welcome back. This, uh, we had to change location. So going back to Bantry, yeah. So the King of Bantry said, looked him in the eye, and he says, I know that you're the son of cool. And you're not, you're just going to bring trouble down here, like. So you may head off on your way. He says, what I will say to you is, he says, I know where your uncle is. He says, you can go and have a chat to your uncle. I think the, the uncle, so he sent him to the fort. I think his uncle's name was Gullion. So Gullion took him in as if he was one of his own and told him over the couple of nights and days about how good, as a leader of Nafina, and you're like how strong your father was, like and such a proud warrior and a name to be feared throughout Ireland if this man was looking for you, like, or if you'd any way come in contact with any of the king's men or anything. If if cool cool was if cool was looking for you or he wanted you dead, that was it. So what he what his uncle said to him, he said, if you want to become the leader in Athena, he says, you're going to have to be a man of culture, you're going to have to be a man of knowledge, and you're going to have to be a man of wisdom and a man of poetry, and basically an all round warrior fighter, knowledgeable country man kind of fearsome guy. So he sent him on his way up to the river Boyne, he says, you need to go back up into Mead, he said, and you need to find a poet and a wise man by the name of Finian, F Finian, I think his name is, and he was a wise man and a poet and a druid, and he lived along these rivers here in Mead, not too far from here, as legend has it, where the fish, seemingly, this famous fish. So, as, as the story goes, Young Finian made his way back up to find Finnegan. Or fi yeah, yeah, so that's the way it went. So he went to find this old wise man and this poet. And at first the old wise man and the poet had enough of these fellas knocking on his door saying, will you help me or will you teach me the ways or the old ancient uh, myths and legends of Ireland. And so a couple of, you know, Finian was a warrior and a good hunter and he would have... He would have put a lot of time and he, he hunted for the old man and he would have brought him stuff and eventually the old man would have been giving him wisdom and of course young Finian being a why uh, young Finian being a very curious young lad would have asked him a lot of questions and so they were he used to notice that the old man used to be the old wise poet used to be fishing at an old pool at the back of the place and I'll give you a look now kind of something similar. So young Fionn McCool used to notice that every evening that Finnegas used to go out into a deep pool off the edge of the river Boyne and he used to fish and being the curious young lad that young Fionn was, he used to say to him, he says, why would you not fish in the river, like, you'd be better fish in the river, you know, and then the, this deep pool, it's only a kind of a runoff off the river. And now Finnegas looks to him and he says, have you ever heard of the the salmon of knowledge? Mm. Young Fionn looks at him and he says, Never heard of hell of it. Old Finnegan says to him, he says, It's said that this old fish, he said, and uh, legend has it that it belongs to a fair haired, tall man. And he says, 
Young, young Fiona, he says, I believe that man is me. Right? So, young Fionn was thinking to himself, I'm a tall, blonde, fair boy. Just when he was thinking that, snap on the line. The two boys to struggle for it. And they pulled it in anyway. Out of the water comes one of the most beautiful salmon you could ever see. If anyone knows salmon, the beautiful colours off it. Old Finnegan was delighted. Finnegan was delighted. He says, we have it. We got it. After all these years, we've the fish. So, that was grand. Finnegan says to the young lad, he says, you know what to do. He says, prepare the fish, he says. I'm going to have a bath in the river, he says. Old Finnegan was celebrating in the river. I know. I've done it. So all the time, young, young Fionn was preparing the fish on a steak, seemingly, and the fish was cooking, and cooking lovely, and getting ready for it. And the the rumour has it a blister came up on the side of the fish, and young, young Fionn looked at the blister and said, Gina, that's going to ruin the fish and the old man. And he put his thumb, and it burnt the thumb. So the minute it burnt the thumb, he put the thumb in the mouth. So, how Phineas got out of the river and came in and fish, he had it all off and he looked at the young lad and he noticed something different with him. His eyes were fiery and he was just, he looked, he looked totally different. How Phineas knew. He says, did you eat the fish? The young lad says, no, never touched it, didn't go near it. He says, did anything it, did anything happen? He says, while, he says, I was, and he says, I burnt my thumb, he says, and I put it in my mouth. And the old boy, the old boy, old Phineas looked at him and he says, he says, you may finish it up. He says, because well, there's only ever one taste, the first person ever to taste it. So he said, it look, he said, finish up the fish and be on your way, young man, he says. So young Fionn went off anyway and he became one of the greatest boys ever. He knew everything and the knowledge he had and the wisdom and everything and the courage and the fighting and he could kill anyone. So he knew there was an old thing going on up in Tara and all the time he had in the back of his head he wanted to avenge his father's death and to become the leader of Nafina. So every year there's a party up just further on up County Mead You'll learn more about this place called the Hill of Tara. And there's a, there used to be a festival up there years ago where all the local warriors and all the boys, king's men and all that used to lay down their arms for one night and go in and have the crack. And after that, there was a man by the name of... You can stop that. So every year uh, uh, there'd be a festival in the Hill of Tara, as I said, where all the warriors and all the boys the Feast of Sauna, they used to call it. So every, every year, once a year, you get to lay down your arms. And the King Con at the time had a big party up there. And young Finian said to himself, he was after doing fierce well this year. He'd eaten the salmon and knowledge. And rumour has it that whenever he'd come across a problem or anything, all he had to do for any knowledge he needed, the knowledge of the world, everything you needed to know, that's all he had to do. So he went on, he had it in his head, I'll go up to this king's party this night. And, sure, I'm Fionn McCool. <laughs> I'm more than welcome to go in there. So he went in anyway and sat down at the king's table anyway. And the king is looking down at this and who's sitting beside the king? Only Gull McMurray, the man who killed his father. And he's looking up anyway and he looks and he looks and he never acknowledged Gull McMurray or nothing and the king demanded to know who's this young lad here this fair haired young lad coming in here and so he asked him to stand up so he stood up stood up he said I'm the son of Cooley the great warrior the once leader of Nafina and I'm here to serve you and so he sat down anyway and he says oh your father what a great man, you're more than welcome. So he feasted and dined with them all night. And the king, after a while, 
I don't want to say something. He said, young Fionn McCool, he says, I was wondering when in life you would show your face, he said. Rumour has it, we didn't know whether you even existed, that your father had, your, mo your mother Myrna had conceived a child for your father before all of this, and people said that you were real, and people said, and he said, so he said, okay, Fionn said to him, well, you've heard of me and you know who I am, he said. I'm here, he said, I want to be the leader of Nafina, he said. I want Gull McMurray out of the way, he said, and I want Gull McMurray's job. I want to be the best warrior and the best protector of the king of Ireland that you've ever seen. And so Gull McMurray said, ah, now we're on it, he said. Every year, he said, after this party, he said, we have one enemy, he said, that celebrates here all night with us, he said, and in the early hours of the morning, Allian is his name. I'll just get his surname down in a couple of minutes. Allian, and the way Allian had operated is he'd party with them all night, and Allian would have his beats of the drums in the morning. An evil, bad drum. And it would put all the people in me to sleep. And he'd come around then, and what he'd do is he'd burn them down. <sighs> with a deep breath, while the whole lot of the people slept. So, that's what he used to do, and so, young Fionn, Young, uh, the king, Young Fionn said to him, he says, well, look, here's the deal, he said. If I do away with Allian, he says, and get rid of his music, of the evil music, he said, and stop him from burning down your fort every year, he says, I want to be the leader of Nafina, and I want to be the king. I want to be the best man for the king, and I want to protect the king forever. So that was grand anyway. So the party was going on anyway in the hill of Tara anyway and young Fionn was going around obviously talking to lads and chatting and he was approached by a man and he says, hey, my name's Fieka. So I think Fieka. And he says, I knew your father, he says. And he says, if you want some help, he says, beating this man. Yeah. So as I said, during the party, he got talking at... Uh, this man, I'm going to read me notes now. So the only way he could fight Allian was to take a belt. Slaan. Slaan. Slaan, sir. So basically the story has it that uh, he met Fikra and Fikra says to him, he says, Allian is arriving here in the morning and he's going to be playing music like what you just heard. And... What you're going to have to do, he says, is here's this spear. Now, right? He says, when you hear Allian's music, he says, you just stand up, he says, and the music, and then take the, the spear will light up when he hears the music, and a mist will come out of it. Take a belt to that, he says, and you won't fall asleep, and Allian won't be able to burn everything when you're awake, because you're a good warrior. So... Young Fionn stayed awake and stood up at the bridge and waited vigil for Allian to come and take over. Because remember the deal that young Fionn was going to become the leader of Nafina and the best man to the king if he could just fight off Allian's music. And you'd hear that music there. And what a lovely gentleman we just met. So basically he had to take a belt out of the spear. And the way it worked after that was he wouldn't be able to sleep. So Allian arrived and he played the music and the whole lot. And Allian started breathing his fire. And obviously young Fionn flicked his, his uh, cloak and the fire just bounced off it and burned a hole in the ground. And Allian knew, he says, my powers are going to be no good against this lad. He must know something or he has serious wisdom and knowledge. So he chased Allian, he chased Allian the whole way up to the north of Ireland and he cut his head off and he put it on a spear and he brought it back to Tara and rumour has it the next morning he arrived back in Tara with Allian's head on the stake because he wanted to take his father's place and avenge his father's death. And he arrived back in the hill of Tara, probably about 20 miles away from here. No, it's all, it's about five miles from here. Oh, four. Up to the hill of Tara. And brought it in on a stake and put it out in the green in the hill of Tara. 
and they all started waking up in the morning and the forts and everything was still up. Allian didn't get away with it this year. So uh, the way it worked was they all came out and the king woke up and brought them all back into the same place and Gull McMurray, the murderer of Finn, of Fionn McCool's father and Fionn walked in and he looked at them all and uh, the king said to Gull McMurray, he says to him, you do realise now what happened here last night and the deal that was made that uh, young, young Fionn McCool is to take, up, take over now as leader of Nafin and the best men to the king. So that's the story, that's the myth, that's the legend. And thanks very much, guys, for watching my vlog. And feel free if we've gotten, because the myth and the legend changes over the years, so feel free to, change, to comment. And thanks very much. The boys are shouting in the background here, but uh, thanks a million. So cheers very much, and thanks. And Subscribe.